Yeah, good afternoon once again. I think you can hear me by now. Yeah, my eyes is off the comment. Can you hear me now? I think you should. So good afternoon once again. Uh, as I've said earlier, uh, today our area of focus is on innovation and entrepreneurship. How can we use entrepreneurship uh, to build our nation and how do you use innovation to accelerate entrepreneurship journey? And I will spend much of my time today talking about the role of creativity and innovation as well as uh, what are the key attributes or features of entrepreneurs. And we may look at uh, some good example of how entrepreneurs uh, use innovation. And I've said many times, creativity is a raw material uh, uh, of the innovation. Because if you don't have creativity, there is no way you can innovate. And I've said this many times, innovation is not just about creating uh, something new, it's about expanding value, uh, enhancing reach, at the same time, simplifying value system. So I think uh, we had a couple of interactions before now. And if you notice, we deliberately started with ict for d just to show us uh, the opportunity in the ecosystem, uh, which is great. We are going to see the gap and the opportunity uh, going forward. And we then uh, look into the emerging technologies. We are able to have a look at uh, what emerging technology is, uh, their futures, attributes, direct associated with emerging technologies, uh, which I think is very important when we begin to have this focus as a stage before we even deep dive into emerging technology. Every emerging technology has a danger associated, but uh, we can do uh, analysis to see the impact. And probably, as I keep saying, we need to be pragmatic. And I remember before getting into this stage, I demonstrated a couple of uh, uh, books and materials for you to read. Uh, beyond just the idea program, I would really suggest uh, you take time and read all the books. I think I earlier uh, shared these books, uh, if I can remember. So have time, go through the books. And I believe they will be, I mean, the book will be able to assist you to, to sharpen your entrepreneurship journey. And uh, Beyond that, if there is any way you think uh, we can help you within the next uh, 10 months that you be with us, uh, we'll be happy to support and talk to your uh, domain-specific uh, lecturers uh, and get deep with them. We'll be happy to assist you. So as I said last week, we'll be doing a uh, fortnight uh, interactive lecture. We'll be inviting experts from different fields to talk to us about the new things happening in their domain and probably show us the opportunity and the challenges uh, of the system. So going into the focus of today, uh, if you talk about uh, innovation and creativity and entrepreneurship, uh, it's important we do a deep dive and see uh, who is an entrepreneur. If I ask this question, uh, can you tell me who is an entrepreneur? Who is an entrepreneur? What are the skills or attributes of an entrepreneur? You know, what are the skills and attributes of entrepreneurs? And what are they doing different from us that are not entrepreneurs? And probably who is an entrepreneur? If you're an entrepreneur, type for us, yes, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm doing this and that uh, to support myself, my family, and the country at large. So I can see someone talking about risk taker. Yes, entrepreneurs are usually uh, risk takers. They usually take a lot of risk, uh, which is uh, interesting. You know, they don't want to leave anything on challenge. They change the status quo. I think somebody said creativity. You know, I've said this. Creativity is a raw material to uh, innovation. Someone said. Uh, uh, Entrepreneur is someone that sees an opportunity and uses it to make profit, yes. I mean, if you are a good entrepreneur, you can provide a solution, why not? Uh, take the money and make profits. You know, it's about innovation and creativity, yes. Someone said, yes, I am an entrepreneur, student with a graphic designer, yes, absolutely. Uh, graphic designers are really uh, 
are solving a lot of problems with their design. You know, uh, entrepreneur a uh, solution provider, yes. Entrepreneur uh, is a risk taker hoping to make profit, yes. I have a shop that I used to sell fabrics here, yes. Uh, to be an entrepreneur, you have to think ways to create income that will support you and your family. You know, so I mean, I like what you're saying. So, but uh, in, in a general sense, you know, uh, and I always tell this to my students, uh, we need to have this entrepreneurship mindset. And beyond that, if you're not an entrepreneur, you need to support entrepreneurs. And I say this all the time, if entrepreneurs uh, all did the same business, uh, for example, if all of us sells, yeah, as someone said, so if all of us open shop, if all of us bake pizza or uh, sells not and shoes and whatever, we all do the same thing. Or if everyone is producing Coca-Cola and Pepsi, uh, it will be a big issue uh, for us. So entrepreneurship journey is important because if you are an entrepreneur, you always think about solving problems. And you know, today's problem is not tomorrow's problem. And I always say this, entrepreneurs solve problems. They are just problem solvers. And most of the entrepreneurs don't think about money first. They think about solving the problem. If they solve the problem, then they take it up. You may think about, yes, I'm a, I am an entrepreneur. I start this, I start, but I fail all the time. So sometimes failure uh, supports you to think big and also have a bigger solution. Uh, one of my mentors keep talking to me about uh, Failure conference. That is a particular conference where people that fail go there and share their uh, failure journey. And uh, I think one of my mentors also uh, shared a book with me, uh, which he called Fail with Pride. Sometimes you can fail. Yes, when you fail, uh, it's not that you didn't do your best. You put all your best, but unfortunately, uh, you didn't do it well and you fail. Then you take it up as a learning curve. So if you have time, you can search this book in the internet, uh, and probably you can have it read. Uh, the name of the book is Fell with Pride. You know? So if all of us do same business, same everything, we operate in the same industry, we sell in the same market, and we have the same product and some services, so none of us would be uh, at the competitive advantage uh, access. And what I say competitive advantage is taking every advantage in your sector and taking all the market share, or maybe being uh, a cost leader in your operation or in your domain. And many domains that we think about, uh, they are very, very difficult to get into because it requires capital, it requires expertise, it requires knowledge, uh, it requires massive production. But entrepreneurs are not only looking at getting something that is already mature, they always start bringing something out of their scope. And if you take, for example, some example we gave last time, practically everything you see in our domain now is been piloted or championed by entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs are not just people that are uh, making profit or making money. Uh, and I've seen many new turn of social entrepreneurship these days. So don't just think about money, uh, or think about profit. Think about solving problem, and think about the long run of running a business. You could make money today; tomorrow you begin to lose. It's okay. But uh, everything you do needs to be aligned within your own value system. And entrepreneurs are always carving out a niche uh, for themselves. And you know, I always sell this. Uh, you say this unique selling proposition as an entrepreneur. You need to have your unique selling proposition. What are you doing that is much, much more bigger than uh, what others are doing? And if you have your unique selling proposition, uh, it will definitely help you to differentiate your business uh, and make it stand out uh, from the uh, massive uh, competitors. And for you to get that, you need to really implement a very high level of uh, creativity. And if you have that creativity, uh, then you have a gain of innovation within your uh, entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem. And that will enable you to practice uh, much, much more better. And I've said many times, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, much more specifically, something within the same 
class, but innovation usually supports you to cultivate creativity. And that when you cultivate creativity in your business, uh, then it supports you to innovate. And when you innovate, uh, you, automat you automatically get a higher place and you create big value. And that value can definitely support you to generate revenue. Uh, if you are revenue driven, uh, else you could be able to develop a usable case scenario where people could use your model and begin to do something much more better. Uh, if you take, for example, most of us are on social media. We didn't pay anything to connect to Facebook, to YouTube, uh, to WhatsApp and the rest. We didn't pay anything. There is no contract that have to do with money. But we signed uh, an user license agreement where we agree that uh, they can use our data to generate revenue. Uh, but at the same time, we're driving value by connecting to their services. We didn't pay to connect to YouTube uh, this afternoon. And we're doing interaction now. So we are getting value from that. But at the same time, Google or Meta or Zoom, if you're using Zoom, they are generating revenue from every click you do. So uh, if you have a unique selling point, uh, you could create a new value. You could generate revenue. You could create large usefulness case of your business. Uh, at the same time, you could you know, provide a wider services. You could provide big idea that could change the world, that could change the society, that could accelerate sustainable development goals, that could accelerate other goals that are really, really, really local. So when I say this all the time, uh, think about solving problem first. Don't think about money. I repeat this many times. So if you look at the concept we just said earlier, uh, creativity is key. As I've said, if you're creative, you definitely bring up a solution. And how do you become creative? Is by observing the status quo, by observing your environment. You know, we have mentioned this last week, uh, the DNA of innovation. You know, what are the attributes of innovators? What are they doing that we don't do? I think if I can remember, we talk about uh, questioning the actual status quo. Why, how, to what extent this is not working or this is working why this company is making money? Why this company is not making money? Why do we have insurgency in Nigeria? Why do we have kidnapping? Why do we have road accident? You know, think about it. Why do we have mental health? So they ask questions, they observe the environment, they experiment, things they have observed, and they associate and they network with a large uh, network of professionals. And when you are outside your domain, you are within the multidisciplinary uh, society, you begin to have much, much more uh, bigger goals. So I'm going to talk about that as a problem. So who is an entrepreneur and how do they innovate? Uh, maybe I ask this example. How are you creating innovation uh, within your own value system? Uh, what's the unique selling point of your product and service? If you are a musician or you are a singer or you are managing a logistics company, you are managing uh, schools, you are managing hospitals. How are you, what is unique selling point about your services? Can you tell me? Can you tell me about that? So let me deep dive into uh, the role of uh, uh, creativity uh, in innovation which I think is not the most interesting. But before I go into that, I always like to give uh, food of thought, uh, which I think is something really, really interesting, you know, food for thought. So just to remind you, we are not lagging in the innovation index. We have all what it takes as a nation to be innovative. Uh, we have population, large population, big market. If whatever you are selling in Nigeria, you have the market, over 200 million the best GDP in Africa. Globally, we are 31 GDP in the world. I think I've shared this data, but I still bring it up for you to have the notion of what I'm trying to do today. And we have over 198 active telephone lines in Nigeria. I think 286 connected lines. And teledensity is 104%, which is very massive. 
Then when you talk about internet users, uh, about 184 million connected internet lines, this data we got from uh, NCC, over 50 million social network users in Nigeria. But in terms of HGI, Human Development Index, uh, we are around 161 out of 189. Uh, a very uh, funny uh, data per se, you know, uh, I mean, I've said this, take some time, go and look at what HCI is. Then if you look at HCI, the same scenario, uh, in terms of HCI, we're not doing really well. And uh, if you look at uh, intellectual index, uh, 114 out of 129. If you look at e-government index, e-internet index, and the rest. So these are good indicators that I think uh, can fuel our thinking. Uh, we have connectivity. Uh, we have good economy to some extent, and our dollar is, I mean, our Naira is getting uh, value uh, over the last few weeks. And again, uh, if you look at the Global Network Readiness Index, so this society is not ready uh, to innovate. You know, because if you look at the ranking, we are 114 out of 134. Our society are not ready uh, to do things uh, online. So how do I encourage, how do I make people to connect to this platform? So I think it's a question that we need to discuss going forward. So this is just food for thought. Then as I mentioned earlier, Nigerians are ranked number four uh, in terms of technical know-how and associate professionals. So we have a good number of people that are connected and we have a very high level of high tech and middle industry. We are ranked 43 in the world and business of digital goods, we are number 50. Uh, security in the digital space, we are 59. Uh, use of open data, so Nigerians are very, very good in extracting and engaging with the open and uh, uh, even close data, we are ranked number 69, so which is very good for business. And e-commerce legislation, we are ranked number 77 globally. So I think these are good indicators that can tell us Nigerians are very, very creative. Uh, but the problem is we are not putting this creativity into the market. You know, we always consume what other people are doing. But I think as we progress, I will show more reason for that. So, you know, I always like sharing this data. So if you look at this as an entrepreneur, uh, this is mind-blowing data. You know, uh, this is coming from Sumedan. Uh, although the data is a bit old, uh, but it's still uh, very relevant and very little change. Uh, based on data, uh, unofficial data coming from the Smedan. So Smedan stands for Small and Medium uh, Development Agency. So in total, micro businesses in Nigeria are 99%. So only one, I mean, just a fraction of, uh, even one of our businesses in Nigeria are really, really in the scale of small and medium enterprise, so which is a big number. So if you see this, over 36 million businesses are micro. I think that's where our economy is not uh, really, really doing well. And it's something that with innovation and creativity and digital entrepreneurship, we can change that score. So only about 68,000 businesses are small businesses employed between 10 to 49 staff. And only about 4,670 businesses are operating within uh, the scope of uh, uh, medium enterprises and employing about 50 to 200 uh, workers. And I've asked this, I've deep dived into this data to see many states, particularly states in northern Nigeria, uh, many and even south, south, and southeast. Uh, we don't have this large scale of uh, companies that are employing more people. And it's the best the case. In developed country, you, you have to tweak, you have to tweak the data up, and that's why you see most of them their GDP are recording in trillions of dollars and pounds. It's a big issue. And if you look at this certain graph, you could see uh, majority of our businesses are operating below uh, 500 turnover per month. So, which is really not good. So, over 25 million businesses in Nigeria are getting revenue of just 50 dollars naira and below. And I think if you look at the slope, again, uh, just about 6 million are generating up to 200,000 uh, revenue uh, per month, as well as uh, up to 500K, 
relatively low and then and then and then so why because creativity is not uh, something that is really uh, very available in most of these enterprises and you cannot run a business uh, if you don't innovate within one to three years you collapse and you know, I always love talking about big companies and their spending in R and D and creativity. Some companies spend as much as half of their revenue uh, for R and D. And when I say R and D, I mean creativity and innovation. So this is something that I think I just have to share this with you, and we can ask ourselves question: Why businesses in Nigeria are making the fifty thousand naira? And even though we have these innovative uh, spares, we have. Uh, practically everything good in the state for us to, to tap into this. Then I, 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 also, I also like this uh, data, uh, and it's mind blowing again. If you look at the sector where we have much of our uh, uh, students operating, and basically who's are return. So if you look at this number uh, in the who's are return, 52% of what Nigerians do is around who's are return. Basically, I buy yard from a bar and I sell. Maybe I buy 10,000 and I sell 11,000 naira. No value addition. But obviously, I've seen many innovation around tailoring, fashion design, and a lot of work, really uh, amazing work done by the youngsters. If you go to Instagram, Snapchat, you see a lot of uh, youngsters opening up a tailoring company. Uh, and that they add a value into the system. Instead of buying from India, from Bangladesh, where they make cloth, uh, you could buy it locally. You can buy the yard uh, and just add value, and that will appreciate uh, the, the economy going forward. And I tell this story even last time when I had this class. Uh, one young star that I've known, he told me he used to buy material of about 15,000 naira. You pay tailors maybe 5,000 naira. Uh, he normally sells 35 all the way to 50 depending on the market uh, opportunity so that is value addition and that's why adidas uh, levi's gucci and the rest of the closing company uh, do, uh businesses uh, all over the world it's a big uh, business with a very big uh, profit margin so but if you look at other sector uh agri even though most of our population are into farming, but still very few uh, businesses are recorded to be doing businesses. And that's why many times uh, the Minister of Agri keeps talking about this, we do subsistence farming, but not doing farming as a business. If you look at construction, 2%, you look at manufacturing, 13%, uh, and the rest, and the rest. So art, entertainment, and recreation, about 1.4%. Education, 0.79%. And that's why we have many out of school children and that's how we have big learning poverty, as we said. So if learners are not learning, and in some states we have as big as 99% learning poverty, big number, and we have over 20 million children that are out of school in Nigeria, and we still don't have business to do in the education system as a big issue. So but if you look at the other picture by the right, is the US uh, employment by sector. So the major sector is education and health services, uh, 36,000 uh, businesses uh, operating in that sector, professional and business services, uh, who's and retailing money. I mean, if you look at it, it's a past the case. You know, they are not doing much in the agri, yes, uh, the same way we are not doing much in the agri, but I'm going to show you another picture that show to us how agri in the US begin to shrink. People are no longer interested in, in agri. But if you look at who's and retailing, 19% uh, is still very um, you know, high in the US, but major and hospitality, uh, a good number and a good rise. So half time, take a Google search and begin to do this visualization. It will tell you a lot of stories. And uh, if you look at this, I'm going to the next picture. Uh, if you notice, this is change of the uh, employment sector in the from 1850 to date. So if you notice, in the early age of uh, Industrial Revolution, majority of the U.S. Uh, opportunity are basically around agriculture. You 
you see it's shrinking right if you look at manufacturing you know it got boosted 1950 but it's shrinking because u.s is also most of the manufacturing most of the big companies in the u.s are no longer producing in the u.s they do their manufacturing in china in vietnam in hong kong uh, and a few other uh, just even the outsourcing business the services the accounting the legal uh, business and the legal services and even telehealth uh, care services are now done online using doctors that are not in the u.s to, to support the public health services using teachers from india from nigeria to teach the u.s children and the rest then household work is also shrinking people now do most of their things in the factory like laundry uh, food processing and the rest they are basically done at the industrial scale you know government services is expanding because government is specializing and financial services and inclusion is also expanding the healthcare and that's why the life expectancy rate is increasing because a lot of offices are now open up to provide healthcare services telecommunication i think uh, is not really changing much from 1950 to date, the utility, you know, a lot of work has been opened up in that sector. So think about this and think about which sector require a lot of creativity, you know, and innovation out of this sector. I'm not going to say much around that. Then look at the change, uh, 1850 to 2015. You see, agri is declining, mining is declining, people are moving into uh, clean and more prosperous uh, business and services. But the reality is all these sectors that are increasing in the U.S. require a lot of creativity and innovation. Basically, entertainment requires a lot of creativity and innovation. That's why in the U.S. you have the Disney, uh, you have the Hollywood and the rest of the industries, professional services require a lot of high level of creativity. The same with financial services, business repair and services require a lot of level of creativity. If you have a mobile phone spot, if you're not innovative and creative, you cannot repair that mobile phone. And healthcare as well. Education. Think about Nigeria. Uh, we practically don't care about education, about healthcare, or repair services. So how do we begin to tap into the market of people that comply? That's the issue I think we practically need to, to tell ourselves. So all this require massive innovation and creativity. You know, uh, you cannot begin to provide good services uh, in the entertainment, in the government, in the, without moving into the creativity industry. And still going back to Nigeria and look at where Nigerians, uh, you know, most of the things we produce or we manufacture, we sell within our locality. Seventy percent of businesses sell within their own neighborhood. Then some town about seventy-two percent. Same state uh, within Nigeria, in Africa, just about 1.7. And in part, we sell more to the world than what we sell to Africa. So I think it's an opportunity for us to begin to innovate, identify what other countries want so that we can export or uh, import to them. So I'll pause here uh, and ask a few questions. Uh, why do we think uh, Nigeria is not uh, selling much? Uh, out of Africa, within the ECOWAS, or we are not selling much to the world. You know, I would love to hear your, your feedback on this. So why do we have uh, these issues? Why Nigerians are not selling outside our locality? Yeah, someone said he's from Umar here. So why people are going to Umar here to buy material, to buy spare part, why? Is it cheaper? Or maybe the guys in Umar here can source much more cheaper uh, than the guys that are selling in Sokoto or in Kano. Somebody's mentioned power supply. So if you mention power supply, we have many solar innovators in Nigeria. So why can't you give us solar? But everyone complains about lights. Why do you have to go into band A or band C when you have solar? You know, with the band A and B, I think 
that is there for people that want to tap opportunity into solar. You know, poor quality product. Yes, if you have poor quality product, it means we need to innovate and have a better design. Yeah, you know, someone says because there is no publicity. Yes, it's a good idea, but now we have YouTube, now we have Snapchat, now we have Instagram. And with this tool, you could target someone who is in Malaysia, someone who is in Chad, someone who is in Ghana, you know? So I think I like the, 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 the feedback coming from the, from the participant. Yeah, someone said from the regulatory bottleneck, you know, we are buying things from China by AliExpress. Why AliExpress is breaking the barrier of the government, even though China also have regulation. Someone said poor government. I don't think poor government is an issue, but we are the one voting the leaders. So why not we vote good leaders uh, in the next uh, election? So if we think leadership is a problem, why not we vote good leaders in the next election? So we look at the profile of each of the leader. We look at their manifest uh, of the candidate. We say, oh, so this guy will favor exportation or will favor dollar coming to Nigeria so that we can have a lower interest rate. I think that's that, that's that's the essence of innovation. And even democracy is a product of innovation. Yeah, I think, uh, is, I mean, I like the interaction, but I just have to go. Uh, so if you look at, uh, just to wrap it up, I like this power, I mean, this slide. You know, I got this slide from uh, Royal Academy of Engineering website from their PowerPoint. And, you know, they focus more of their innovation teaching into industry and uh, productivity. And if you look at it, you know, they mentioned four essential innovation I mean, four essential things that must happen for innovation happen, you know? And they, they look at collaboration, ideation, value creation, and implementation. So if we take collaboration, I think I've mentioned this earlier, you cannot create a good solution alone. You need to have someone support you. If you are good in product design, you need to have someone that is good in packaging your product that will help you to write a better project description or product description or someone that can do a very nice design. Uh, one of my friends, Motala, he posted something recently. He bought a very nice, uh, uh, very nice uh, uh, drink from Kano, but unfortunately there is no name and number of the lady or the guy producing the drink. And he mentioned this in his Facebook page, uh, that this guy or this lady automatically lose uh, me as a customer because if I take a drink and I like the drink, I could easily reach out to her. So if you take, for example, I have a bottle of water, you know, very nice water, design is good, the bottle is looking nice, and the address of the factory is here. In fact, even beyond that, they have their email, they have their social media handle, I guess, and the rest. So this is brand. A lot of people work together to do this, including with someone who is looking at the water quality, you know, and the rest. Business card, people do business card. Why do you have business card? Just to show uh, that you are doing something uh, that could even interest others to have interest in what you are doing. Then you talk about implementation, it's also the major issue. I think here they mention design, they mention quality and consistency. I think that's what you said. If you are setting your price high, uh, the quality must be uh, within the context of the, the price. And the design must really look good. Your design must have uh, uh, an ambience that people would definitely like. And you could do this by building a very uh, productive team that have a common or that have a shared value. And how do you create value creation, which we have been talking about, is when people have or realize value from engaging with your product and basically your customer. Even though you are not targeting people that will buy something from you, uh, you should be able to appreciate or make someone appreciate uh, something that you have produced or something that you have put in the sale for people to see. And basically that's the major uh, things around innovation. People must be able to see value in what you are doing. And you know, how do you ideate? You know, you have to create a lot of prototype. Uh, you need to have someone to test what you're doing. 
I need to have someone to buy the day with you. Even this water that you see, uh, beyond just putting everything, they say NAPDA registration number. You know, so it clearly shows this water have gone through uh, some level of validation. So innovation really entails doing not one thing at a time, but doing so many things uh, and beyond. And all these are uh, what the Royal Academy began to put to us as an element of, uh, of innovation. And I think I like the question. I do think this element happens sequentially or simultaneously or a combination. And I can ask this question no, do I need to create value for me to be an innovator? Must I implement my own idea before I can become an innovator? No. You could do the ideation, you collaborate with someone, then you can ask someone to implement the solution for you. And probably you will create a value. You may not necessarily create the end value as a result of your innovative thinking, but someone could build from where you stop and then be able to have a more realized value uh, out of uh, the, the ideation you have done. And, and a lot of... So then, I think, I don't need to mention much time here, but I need to spend much time here, but these are interesting uh, innovation and these are emerging technologies. So if you are thinking about innovation going forward, uh, you have to leverage artificial intelligence. If you have leverage AI, you could definitely accelerate uh, your innovation journey and your creative journey. And I use a lot of generative AI tool to support me to model, to rethink about what to do. For example, if I want to create a new uh, product, I can go to ChatGPT or Gemini or whatever you call it. I begin to simulate and model and refine and fine my ideation. And virtual reality, people need to have a reality beyond just the usual, the wow they see with their eyes. You need to embed some element of uh, augmented reality uh, to have that interactivity. I tell this uh, about two months ago when I gave a keynote speech uh, for the Institute of Architecture, annual uh, meeting in Abuja, and they actually talk about the future of AI uh, and architectural profession. And I showed them that the reality is AI cannot take over the job of architect, but architect may lose their job if they didn't innovate. And I appreciate things the Institute of Architecture is doing to, to, to speed up or to accelerate or to reskill uh, their profession. And I was able to show them that if you are designing a house for me, I will appreciate more. I can pay more money if you give me a virtual reality of how my bedroom will look like how my toilet, how my shower will look like, how my kitchen, and what is my view. I can pay more money around that. And I've seen many architects now leveraging this virtual reality and, and augmented reality. And robotics is an area where I think uh, we're not doing well. And, and why China is uh, getting much bigger in the protection uh, system is because they leverage robots. I think how the robot that we have in the world are currently in China. And even Internet of Things, IoT, even beyond Internet of Things, there is artificial Internet of Things, AIoT, uh, enabling you to collect massive amount of data uh, from anywhere without having to power or to connect the device. Because most of you uh, talk about uh, power as a video limitation, but with IoT equipment, uh, you could massively uh, engage uh, in big data collection, and, and big data is an area where uh, innovators definitely have to focus their attention. You cannot innovate if you don't have data. And why earlier on I was able to show to us data from Sumer. So I think with that data, you can think about uh, doing something around that. And if you do that, you can definitely uh, begin to ideate things around that. Then, uh, I mean, I like this question. They put the right ideas for how each example may shape your personal life and your future. So I will ask the participant, I'm going to share this video, uh, think about how AI could definitely change your thinking. And think about how virtual reality will take about your job. I'm a teacher, and I'm very skeptical about the innovation around virtual reality and augmented reality. If I didn't take this serious, uh, I may not really have a job to do in the future. And even robotics and automation, how this can uh, change your career plan, or how this can, improve, can support you to deliver much more value, you know? And that's why people buy from China, because if you buy from China, the design is good, uh, the product is fantastic, the solution is really nice, and the cost is very affordable. I mean, I talk to many entrepreneurs, they say, oh, we prepare to buy this thing from China. 
than to buy from a bar or than from contemporary internet. So think about this and which are the most innovative company today and why, you know, I maybe discuss which company in Nigeria is leading in the AI. You know, I read something yesterday from the internet. Uh, the Minister of uh, Digital Economy mentioned to the press that uh, he got about $1.5 million uh, grant uh, to start uh, AI innovation, which is really something uh, fantastic for, for us as a nation. So think about this, and probably we should be able to have some new thinking uh, out of uh, this innovative thing. And, and beyond this, uh, think about data science, think about uh, gene editing, nano engineering, quantum computing, supercomputing, uh, fork computing, you know, and the rest of the other emerging technologies. Precision agriculture, you know, um, um, you know, lab-based uh, food and whatever you call it. So I think I have seen a lot of uh, you know uh, feedback coming from the uh, from the participant. Uh, you know. So I mean, just wrap it up. Uh, I mean, to make it much more specific, uh, let me be too academic. I will, I'm going to define what creativity is as defined by Franklin. Franklin said to us, creativity is defined as the act of generating or organizing ideas. You know, alternatives or possibilities that may be useful in solving problems, communicating with others and entertaining ourselves and others. So I really, really like this definition. Uh, it's done, I think, 1982, but it's still relevant. So if you look at the Franklin uh, definition, creativity is that as an act of Number one, generating or organizing idea. So you may not really generate a new idea if you recognize someone's idea and come up with alternatives or possibility from that idea that you organize or generate. And after doing that, the product of your action solve problem or help in solving problem, and you are able to communicate uh the idea or you will act very well you could say oh yes uh, i took this theory and i operationalized that theory but along the way i didn't see anything i didn't find anything interesting from that and you're able to communicate to the larger audience effectively uh, it's a good thing in innovation because you were able to use creative thinking to validate that policy or to organize that policy and you know, as researchers, we always used to put limitation of our research. And in some instance, we put the limitation, and that's how we do literature review to recognize and appreciate what others have done. You cannot write uh, a diploma or a certificate or a degree or a PhD thesis without going deep into literature review. And that is organizing existing idea. You have to critique literature and you have to communicate your critics, I mean, criticisms. To show, I didn't say criticisms, I said critic. You have to show your critic. Don't just say this is bad, this is bad, but yeah, this is bad, but I think this is the best way uh, to get this thing done out of your way. And if you're able to even entertain others, you could organize yourself as, as an individual. You know, most of the artists, uh, you know, the filmmakers, uh, the musicians, uh, the, the magicians, they are also innovators. I mean, I love uh, watching or engaging with magicians, and they will be able to play tricks for you, and they just play with your brain. So they are innovators. You think something real, well, it's not real, but they just use your intelligence. So I like to read this definition, and another definition by uh, Edwards, the concept of creativity involves uh, creative thinking, creativity process, and creativity outcomes. So critical thinking is essential, and is a skill for the 21st century. But creativity process uh, is something that is very, very large, and that process can happen anywhere. It could happen in the kitchen, it could happen in the classroom, it could happen in your bedroom, it could happen while you're swimming, it could happen in the beer parlor, it could happen in a music or concert or whatever you call it. And if you look at the last uh, thing we have, Creative ideas are a multiplicative product of originality. And for you to say I'm creative, 
you must be original. So you must not take someone's idea and say, this is your idea. And that's why we have the intellectual uh, registry where you go and this time you are intellectual property. And I think if you search Nigerian patent or IP registry, you could see a lot of ideas being recorded by Nigerians. And I think it's incredible to see Nigerians uh, registering their idea. You see many songs, many stories, many short essays being patented or registered uh, to serve God, uh, your originality. And whatever you do must have utility, and that utility must surprise others. And whereas unpoetic ideas are rotten or habitual, uh, it could be something beyond that create a massive response. So I, I think I really like this uh, three explanation about creativity and innovation. And I will suggest half time deep there about them. So and then if you talk about creativity and innovation, you know, at the level of enterprise level, the creativity is defined as the generation of new. So the area innovation that we look at are uh, at the level of personal or individual level. But if you look at the enterprise level, company level. So you could talk about innovation and creativity as uh, the generation of new and useful, valuable ideas for product, service, process, and procedures by individual or groups in specific or regional context. So basically it's what? Generating new idea to scale up revenue, to scale up new product line, IP tech, automobile industry, uh, before it does uh, gas and petrol uh, cars. Now we have electric vehicle. Practically every big manufacturing company now are moving into electric vehicle. And sometimes they are doing the, uh, the fossil uh, fuel uh, uh, car system. And we're talking about mixed energy, we're talking about mixed grid, we're talking about blended land. Even as a teacher, as a university, we are enterprise. We are not just focusing our attention to brick and mortar teaching. Where students come to classroom and learn we are looking at the possibility of opening up our campus uh, in many uh, countries at the same time opening up our program for people to learn online. And innovation can happen either within the industry or outside the industry. So innovation that happen within or the actors that are innovated within the industry uh, are basically your customers. So usually many companies do a survey uh, to get feedback uh, from their customers to see oh, how happy are you about our services, you know, uh, the engagement. I mean, if you take, for example, airline, they ask about the check-in process, your luggage services, your onboard meal and uh, entertainment services. Uh, if you take a restaurant, uh, how bad do you uh, stay uh, while waiting for the food to be delivered to you? Do you do like the test, the assault? What do you do? So, taking Feedback from a customer is essential. If you run a business and you don't listen to your customer, it's, it's a big issue. And that's why even at the Ideas program, uh, we have an email, we have a telegram, we have a WhatsApp group, and we listen to you. We listen to your complaints, things that we can do, we take it up and we improve. Things that we cannot do, we put it and keep in view. And you know, professional body, you also need to listen to them, because that's what they matter expert as well as the cross-boundary network and things that are even uh, not something that you may think about now, but you can think about it. Uh, as it then if you talk about creativity or innovation input from the outside world, uh, you know, if you talk about government, government policy usually uh, for many industry to, to, to innovate. Uh, if government is putting a lot of taxation or forcing companies to remove their carbon print to be, I mean, I tell this story all the time. Base University, uh, this semester, we say no nylon bag. We don't want takeaway uh, packed in our campus. So we spend a lot of money uh, to recycle uh, the waste. And at the same time, we want to be a responsible uh, campus. So we ban the use of plastic, uh, uh, rubber, and plate, and whatever. You see, most of our students now carry uh, uh, food plants, uh, they have tea plus and the rest, just to reduce the amount. And, and that is not just uh, because of the government regulatory, uh, it's because of our interest to help the society. And sometimes your supplier will say, sorry, we're no longer supplying this. And we cannot support this product. If you cannot support that product, what do you think about it? Even in this university, we have many service providers that say, sorry, we're no longer manufacturing this. And we don't want to even give this out. 
and also research council and donor uh, agencies. They, they influence a lot of uh, uh, creative thinking and innovation within our uh, own industries. And if you talk about creativity and innovation as well, you know, uh, I mean, I like this definition. This is much more uh, market-driven innovation. It's defined as the creation of new product or production method. You know, method, if you do, I mean, for example, production line, uh, most of the industries now are leveraging the industry 4.0. If you run or if you manufacture 20 models of car, you must have 20 production line. Now, with the pull and push mixed together all the innovative manufacturing processes, you can run one production line and produce over 20 car, model of cars because it's industry 4.0, it's robotics, and that's why things coming from China are cheap. It's not that they are bad, but because Chinese have leveraged the industry 4.0 and you're able to produce things in a much more cheaper and much more effective way. And that also leverage a uh, global uh, outsource network. And people don't even keep inventory in the warehouse. I take, I always mention the example of Dell. If you buy any Dell computer, it's not because the Dell just manufactured them, it's because someone uh, order their product. Even BMW, they have the same model. So innovation or creativity doesn't just mean producing something new. It could be changing the way things have been done. I give an example. In the last election, the federal government used card reader uh, to reduce the amount of election fraud. And I think it's a good innovation because instead of using the manual way to verify the voters, uh, people now swap their card and they vote better. So it's an innovation. Uh, it's a new way of doing things, and I think it's something that we have to acknowledge. And you know, you could even say, "Okay, sorry, we are no longer running uh, our manufacturing line now. We want to outsource everything." You could say, "Oh, in our company, we are not running the cleaning services because we see we are debating from our core mandate." So I think that's an area where most of us would think about. Then, I mean, I also like this definition, the key element to define an innovation it must be a new idea. Being a new encompasses an idea that is perceived as a new to an individual, regardless of when it was first used or discovered. So I don't really appreciate this definition much more uh, because things are really, really changing beyond that. But I still acknowledge that, yes, for you to say you are innovative, you have to have a new thinking, you need to have a new idea, but it may not necessarily be a new idea. It could be an idea that is there, but not be really, really put to use. And I also like this uh, other for an idea to be considered an innovation, it must also be successfully implemented and utilized for the economic benefit. And I, not only economic benefit, but even social benefit. Something that a human uh, could, I mean, meditation, if you take meditation, if you take yoga, if you take sports, uh, someone just invented a new sport. And uh, if you take it up and use it up, you improve your mental capability. And by extension, you live longer. And you have a healthy life and you spend very little uh, for health. So a lot of things we can think around that. Then if you talk about sources of innovation, you know, I think I've mentioned this, internal and external sources. But uh, if you look at internal sources, it's usually actually within your enterprise system, but uh, it could be a mix of both. And it could be uh, maybe change of uh, manufacturing processes. It could be because uh, uh, there is a new way of doing things. Maybe there is no interest in what the consumers want. So think about it. Internal, external are the key barriers to what we do. And you know, why do we innovate? What are the benefits of innovation and creativity? I think if you do that, you'll be able to create a new product or service that solve problems for people, even for machine. At the same time, you will be able to improve process and make them more uh, efficient and effective. I'm just trying to wrap it up uh, so that we can move forward, then you will be able to find a new market for existing products or services. Because if you keep doing the same thing, you keep going to the same market, and your innovation is been exposed, you begin to copy and reverse engineer your solution, you will not have the market. Unless if you are a market leader like Coca Cola and Pepsi, you know, it's difficult for you to go into this uh, business. Many people start it, but unfortunately, they don't really get the market share. I know there is this popcorn. You know, from Canada, they are emerging, they are making a lot of uh, effort to compete, 
but I don't really see them competing as much as Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola have the global reach and already have the market base. And you'll be able to create new jobs because uh, the essence of entrepreneurship is to create opportunity for others. And if government say for you to operate in this ecosystem, you must do this. And because government have to protect jobs, government have to create new opportunity for the growing uh, population. I think in Nigeria we have the average population growth about 5.6%. And in many states as big as 8.6%. So if you don't create opportunity, you don't create value, you don't innovate at the government level, you end up having everyone carrying gun uh, to begin to kill or to begin to kill now. So it's important we have to think as individuals, as citizens, uh, to find a path to energy to innovate. And just to get a job, if youngsters in your neighborhood have no job to do, they will definitely look after you. And you also have to provide a way through which uh, society will have a positive impact. How do you stop fake news? How do you stop uh, hate speech? How do you encourage youth to be part of the election and democratic process? You know, how can I create a law that will, that will encourage women to be active in the agri uh, ecosystem? How can I encourage women to go for antenatal? How can I have a campaign to support girls to go back to school? I think that's a good system when we think about. Then you talk about how can we make it fun? Because people have to have fun, people have to enjoy it. People need to have a value uh, that could drive them to live a healthy life. So I think these are the key, very key uh, benefits of uh, being creative and being innovative. So I think key takeaway from this our engagement uh, I'm wrapping it up in the next five to ten minutes. Uh, key takeaway for us, I mean, I like asking questions. Is innovation and creativity key to entrepreneurship success? Do you think this question is good? Is it a good thing? Because I have said this many times, you know, according to many school of thoughts, many policy documents uh, within the global space. You know, creativity and innovation help us to develop new way of improving an existing product or services. And that also supports us to optimize our existing value system. And that includes family value, that includes society, that includes even our religious system, even our churches and mosques are innovative. Are innovative. You know, I always uh, talk to myself, the case study of this church, Causa. You know, if you look at Causa website, you look at how they are innovating, how they are collecting tithe and the rest of the uh, support, arms, and, uh, you know, things that we give as believers. Uh, even mocks these days, they have bank account. Banks now have POS where you can, I mean, uh, mocks have POS. Uh, they have bank account. They have a QR code. I pray recently in the mocks somewhere around uh, central area and they have a qr code where you can just uh, swap the i mean scan your i mean the qr code with your phone and you pay uh, a support to the to, to the mosque and they even have their meter number putting bold leads if you want to contribute to uh, to, to giving uh, to the court so i think basically innovation support us to really uh, enhance or improve our existing uh, and you know, uh, successful innovation is driving uh, a lot of, I mean, it's driving forces uh, that allow entrepreneurs uh, to think outside of the box. And I like this word outside of the box, beyond outside of the box. Think about those two power from the box so that your computer will not be so, so close. So that you can still remain operating, you can still remain in existence. And you know, that will also take away the traditional operator within your value system. And we also have a new entrance. You know, if you have a big restaurant where you sell uh, Kazi and Oha and Amala and whatever you call it, now people are cooking from home. And if they have a better Instagram page and follower and they have better review, they will definitely buy from them because they have the market, they have the audience. So it's important we think about that. and. Um, uh, you know, if you innovate uh, through this innovative system, you could create a new opportunity. Uh, at the same time, you could create interesting and potential, but still a versatile market. 
because of your idea. And, and to be sincere with you, if you do this, uh, you could have, uh, how do you call it? Uh, you could have, uh, you could create a need for yourself and you could have a possibility of depreciating uh, even your product for others. And, and that will also give you uh, the, the, the potential uh, to still uh, remain in the market. So if you are not in the market, it's completely uh, change the way you do things. And I, I really, really uh, love to tell this all the time, uh, the possibility of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation and creativity in Nigeria is massive. And if you go through that, you could create a disruptive solution that will definitely differentiate your product from others. And you know, having a good hold on innovation, uh, you have a net result that could definitely change the way you do things and not even you, but the way our ecosystem is right. And we have seen it from the data that we have already put uh, from the US and even from the CIMEDA. And at the same time, uh, you could have uh, a big advantage uh, over others because we have the population as a nation. So uh, going back to the question I have asked, is innovation and creativity key to entrepreneurial success? And I've seen a few of you commenting, yes, 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 but how? You know, innovation and creativity are essential to one's individual success, yes. Yes, innovation, yes, but how? You know, it's a key to success, creativity, and innovation help entrepreneurs to know their target audience, how to break into the market, and still remain very, very competitive. So I think I truly appreciate your feedback and your comment. But uh, from my own words, you see, Yes, I agree, innovation and creativity are key to entrepreneurial success, and they are also very, very essential uh, element to drive growth and sustainability for the business venture. But sometimes innovation is also vital uh, for us to succeed. And even as a student, you have to be uh, innovative, you have to be creative for you to even pass your uh, exams. And at the same time, innovation and creativity uh, support entrepreneurs to differentiate themselves, you know, from others. You know, to say, this is me, this is not others. This is my own product. By just looking at, if you look at Coca-Cola, you look at Pepsi, you clearly know this is Pepsi, this is Coca-Cola. Even though Coca-Cola had Merenda, I mean, uh, yeah, they have Fanta, Pepsi have uh, Merenda, they have 7-Up, uh, they also have uh, uh, how do you call it? Uh, can't remember the name of the drink. Then we have Coca Cola, we have Pepsi Cola, we have Schwells, maybe you have. So they all have the same product, but from the test, uh, you could clearly say this is something. New. And I always tell this even in the vision, the food industry. Uh, most of our young uh, ladies and young guys uh, produce food, uh, support the nutrition ecosystem, but you cannot appreciate the test. If I go to your shop today, I eat. Uh, and I go back tomorrow, I have a different test. There is nothing to depreciate. But if you go to KFC, you go to Mr. Pigs, you go to McDonald's, uh, you go to Pizza Hut, and whatever you call it, in Jaibi, in Sokoto, in KB, and Khan, the food tastes the same because they curated their research and that's their secret. So as an entrepreneur, you need to leverage innovation and creativity to safeguard your asset to support your business and also to appreciate uh, you from others. And at the same time, you have to prepare to respond to market change. At the same time, you have to solve the existing business problem. Uh, and I mean, if you run a bank or IT uh, firm now with the Japan syndrome, how do you meet up with the Japan syndrome? At the same time, you need to respond to market changes, you need to solve problems, and you need to drive the risks that are always within our business. And at the same time, you must attract uh, new customers and must, you must retain your own existing uh, customers. And sometimes you have to foster uh, collaboration within your ecosystem. And at the same time, you need to foster culture change so that uh, the new booze of uh, emerging tech will not take you out of your business. If you say, sorry, I don't do delivery. Uh, I run a restaurant. I only sell in my restaurant. You may have you may not even have a customer in the new in the new years to come. For example, during COVID-19, most of the businesses have to innovate to begin to do things uh, through the supply chain system. You say, oh, sorry, I don't take transfer. You know, I only take cash. 
you may lose customers this days. And it's a big issue. You say, oh, sorry, I don't take uh, car transfer, or I don't take uh, car transfer. I mean, you may run into uh, a big business. At the same time, if you think about innovation, you know, you may think about uh, uh, creating a new pathway uh, to even begin to have a new idea, to even begin to have new product. And, you know, as it is for us now, uh, we have the population, we have the opportunity, but we're not tapping into that. But if you think about creativity, we can seamlessly have our value system being uh, pushed into the next. So I have another question for you. How does creativity and innovation work together? How does creativity and innovation work together? How? Can you tell me how? How? Because we have earlier said if you have innovation and creativity infusing to your business, uh, you know, it sparks a lot of interest and it sharpens your market. It supports even easy collaboration and communication. I think I have said this all the time. The telegram that we use for this class is very, very effective. It's very, very potent. Even though in, in the early stage, they don't have a plan to have that. But along the way, we see the response, feedback from you. We just have to put the telegram, telegram page, uh, which is interesting. So it's part of the innovative process. And we have to respond. We have to act as innovation, I mean, as the ecosystem begins to change. So can I have your feedback about this? I think I we just have to be fast. Yes, creativity, direct original ideas, while innovation turns them into practical solution, combining com combining to drive progress, solve problems, and spark positive. Creativity brings the idea while innovation is exactly I like it. You create and sustain it with innovation, creativity feed innovation. So I, I really like uh, the feedback coming from you. Uh, it's an interesting feedback. I truly uh, like what you're saying. But uh, in, the, in my own thinking, you know, uh, yes, I mean, I, I support the idea. Uh, creativity provides the foundation of a new and unique ideas. As someone said, uh, while innovation is the process of transforming those ideas into tangible outcomes. I think that's what one of the guys said. So innovation, I mean, creativity provides thinking, the foundation to have a unique ideas, while innovation is the process of transforming those ideas into, into, into more tangible outcomes. And you know the two work together to create solutions, improve operates, uh, at the same time support us to take risks and also depreciate our product uh, from others. You know, at the same time, if you leverage creativity and innovation, uh, we can because we are entrepreneurs. We can foster a culture of continuous improvement and drive uh, entrepreneurship. So, so I think uh, really. I'm getting amazed with what you guys have said. Creativity is a sustainability of innovation. They have both the same aim of bringing new ideas into the business. So I think this is really, really interesting uh, engagement coming from you. But, you know, as expert in this field, uh, we should be able to really have a new thinking. And I think most of the experts that are operating in this country, uh, you know, innovation, innovators are not going to be innovators. It happens as a result of the change of the environment, as a result of the exposure. You know, a friend of mine was sacked from his job about nine years ago, and that gave him opportunity to even think big. And I think he's really, really very happy that he got sacked from his company. So when you lose your job, or you lose everything, or you lose something, or you lose customers, I think that's when you begin to really think and expand your horizon. So thank you very much for responding to the question. I think let me open the next question. So what is the purpose of innovation in business? Why do we innovate? You know, why do we innovate in the business? Why? Why? Why do we innovate in the business? Why? Why? Why do we innovate in the business? Innovation and creativity are crucial for entrepreneurs. They help find new opportunities, solve problems, and stand out in the market. Uh, creativity give back to innovation. Innovation is the end product of creativity. I like this to credit improvement. Creativity is the front end of a process that ideally will result in innovation. Creativity is coming up. I mean, a lot of good uh, feedback are coming from you. And that really, really means, uh, you know, you are engaging with, I, I think I like someone's creativity is just like HTML and 
<laughs> and the CSS. I like this. <laughs> because I do a lot of work with HTML before, and you have to do all the heavy lifting. But with the emergence of CSS, uh, you could easily leverage existing uh, resources and begin to do things much more better. Thank you very much for putting that, you know. And, uh, you know, for the, I mean, I think a lot of good things are coming from, but from my own thinking, from my own thinking, you see, the purpose of innovation in business is to break to differentiate uh, your own value proposition. You know, at the same time, meet your customer needs. Uh, probably, maybe you can gain maybe a competitive advantage. You know, I'm going to do a lecture on competitive advantage as we progress. So, after taking this my three module, I'm not going to stop, but I'll be taking you every two weeks or every one month. I mean, every month, to talk about a new emerging things as they progress. So I'm talking much around competitive advantage and probably uh, talk around how do you do your own value system. But if you invest in a business, you can achieve competitive advantage, you can drive growth, you can improve operational efficiency, which we have mentioned earlier. At the same time, you can adapt to change and promote sustainable development. You know, I tell this story all the time. At Bayes University, when COVID-19 came, we didn't suffer. As federal governments say, close your university, the next day you move online. Because we have already created a pathway through which our leaders learn how to use digital tools. And many universities are unable to do this teaching and learning online because they didn't infuse the culture of innovation with digital technology. So if you embrace innovation and creativity, uh, it will support you to be sustainable, to have resilience. And if you embrace innovation in your business, you can still remain relevant and you know creativity will support you to thrive in dynamic marketplace and at the same time support you to create a longer term value for your customers and stakeholders uh, and that will also lead to your customers and, and even your stakeholder and even your regulator to say this business is very sustainable it's very inclusive and at the same time uh you know, the business is very resilient. And at the same time, uh, it will support you to, to to even go beyond the usual. You know, respond to your customers before they even think about what to do. You know, most of us, we change our pawn, not because our pawn is not functioning, it's because uh, we were perceived by the pawn manufacturers that what we have is not as good as what they have produced out of even the car. The same we change cars. So it's, it's something that I think we need to think about. Most of these big names and big businesses, they already create uh, an innovative pathway for their enterprises. You know, and, and if you do that, you definitely uh, begin to to, to 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 poster collaboration and poster innovation in your, in your industry. Uh, at the same time, I have another question for you before I go. The last question is how. Uh, how can you encourage innovation and creativity in the workplace? You know, in our offices, in our, in even in our home. How do you infuse uh, your family to be creative? And I have uh, youngsters in my house, and I have daughters in my house, and they're still in the status quo. You know, they ask questions that I don't even ask my mother now, even though I see myself as an adult. <laughs> you know, if I ask my mother that, she'll see it as a taboo. You know, as I get the transition, but I have a young children that ask uh, a very, very serious question that for me, I, I find it very difficult to respond. So how can you encourage innovation and creativity in our workplace and in our homes? How do we encourage this? I really want to see this coming from you in the next three minutes, then I can, I can close the class. Performance review, creation of awareness through encouraging Collaboration and ideation, I think the innovation, opening mind and think. Yeah, I mean, I think the most interesting thing about the, the feedback I'm gotten for this question is having a positive mindset. You know, I, I tell my colleagues all the time, I tell my uh, superior, and I talk to even my wife and my kids that we need to have a positive mindset. Don't ever think negative. In fact, even this morning, I was talking to my son. Uh, he said one of his brothers is looking at him and uh, he said he's mocking him. I said, how did he mock you? And he could not explain. He said, always have he said, but he sees his best 
because problem are so always have a positive mindset and that will uh spike up innovation and have a clean and healthy uh, environment and also have multicultural environment uh, if you run a business and you have everyone from your village i don't really see that as innovative but so have people from different belief from different cultural background uh, to, to, to support uh, that innovative thinking yeah by introducing new ideas something so i think uh, a lot of uh, good feedback is coming from you but from my own part is uh, we have to encourage innovation and creativity in the workplace uh, because we need to foster a culture of uh, continuous improvement because as a business if you don't improve your business is bound to fail and for you to do that uh, i think that is proven way of doing it and i think what we do in my organization here at Bill's university uh, we make innovation as a core value uh, as a core uh, business system and I tell this for example, I think uh, in my university, apart from the uh, academy and administration, we take innovation and creativity and technology as a core. We didn't see this as a support service, but we see them as, uh, as, as a core business value. And that's why, as I mentioned, when COVID-19 came, we didn't struggle, we moved civilians. And also, it's important, you know, we let our uh, staff and colleagues and even younger ones, even the security, to have a voice in our organizations, you know. Uh, little things you can get from the security could change the entire value system. And you need to be responsible, you need to uh, ride on the regulatory framework put by the government, professional body, and civil society organization. If you do that, you could really have an innovative and open system. And you have to encourage collaboration, as someone said. You know, people have to collaborate. It's important to have a group, WhatsApp group. You know, maybe if you are working in product design, it's important to have a WhatsApp group, uh, leverage technology such as Slacks, you know, global group, uh, global workspace, you know, Trello, you know, even Instagram, you could have a close Instagram group. If most of the the members are within who are using that ecosystem, and you also need to take feedback. You know, I tell this all the time at Bayes University. Every semester, we made it compulsory. Our student must give us feedback. So, Orisland didn't teach well. What he teaches out of context, and uh, I think he could do this to improve his teaching going forward. In fact, the most interesting part I see uh, from my student is their end of the semester feedback and assessment. You so, oh, Orisland. So by teaching, he's under teaching, he's not giving me the material. I will take it very, very seriously in this university. So always uh, let your customers, let your stakeholders, let your host community, uh, you know, give you feedback and take their feedback very, very seriously. A good customer give feedback and if you take it off, you could return them in your enterprise. A bad customer always run away. And you have to reward your employee uh, for putting an innovative ecosystem. You need to give them incentives. You need to incentivize uh, their contribution to the enterprise. And that will also uh, push others to think uh, beyond the box. So thank you very much uh, for taking time to be with us. And if you have any other question, uh, do let me know. And uh, I'll be happy to respond. Uh, within the next one, two, three minutes. If there is nothing to share, uh, I'm going to close this session and I must appreciate all of you for tolerating all our you know, uh, you know, issues around uh, timing, connectivity, challenge that most of you experience, and some uh, slight, uh, I mean, slight change of the, uh, change of the schedule and the rest. So thank you very much. I will stop here. I'm going to end the live stream. Oh, yeah, somebody asks different between emerging technology and innovation. <laughs> so we can discuss this uh, in the next uh, engagement.
And someone asks, how can you get my number? My number is in the, I mean, I don't have an, I mean, if you message me, I may not respond because I have a lot of calls coming. But if you email me uh, through my email, I will be happy to, uh, to respond. So thank you very much.